Hey friends, Pastor Liz here. I am actually going live from my new computer. Um, so I'm hoping that this is working properly and I'm super excited. If you look behind me, oh, wrong side, not used to the mirror image. You'll see this poster back here. Can you tell where I am? Today I'm going live from our uh, younger age groups Sunday school room. And so uh, I'm at church, y'all. And I am so sad that you're not here with me. Um, but I am glad to be here. I'm cleaning up a little bit here and there trying to get it ready for when we can all be together again. So it'll be clean and ready for you and just all set to come in and do ministry together again. Um, today, I wanted to follow up a little bit on what we were talking about last week. If you joined us last week, or even if you didn't, we talked about doubting Thomas and when the apostles who were locked in a room um, all gathered together talking about the death of Jesus, uh, we talked about how they were sad because they missed their friend. And um, today we're going to talk about a similar story. But instead of the, 11, the 12 apostles, uh, we're going to actually be talking about some different disciples and how they ran into Jesus after his resurrection. Uh, in a different place, but in a very similar way. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're reading from the book of Luke this time, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. So let's just go ahead and dig in and read from Luke. It says, Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the king about the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be crucified. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, since women of our group were a step astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Jesus said to the disciples, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all of the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning with us while we ta were talking to him on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. Those were the guys we talked about last week. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of bread. Friends, the disciples that we're talking about today, just like the disciples last week, were sad. And they were confused after Jesus died and then his tomb was empty. They have not yet seen the risen Christ like you and I have known about this since we were born, right? Our parents have been teaching us about it, but they didn't know it. They knew what was told in all of the scriptures, but they didn't yet see it to believe it. 
As two of the disciples took a walk to a town called Emmaus, they talked about all of these things um, and all of the, the experiences that they were feeling after their friend's death. Talking about something painful, upsetting, or scary is one of the ways that we begin to understand what happened and how we feel about it. And we talked about that a little bit last week also. It is important to talk about how you're feeling. Um, that is the best way to get through anything. If we hold it up inside of, a, of us, it just kind of eats away at us and it just makes us even more sad. So it's important to talk about it with other people, people who are going through the same thing, people who may have already been through the same thing, or just people that love us because they want to help us through everything. So as the disciples walk and talk, Jesus appears to them and joined them. That's what we were reading about. The story tells us that they, their eyes kept them from recognizing him. They did not recognize Jesus, even though he was walking with them and they were friends with him. Perhaps they were so filled with sadness that they weren't able to recognize him. Or maybe after all of the suffering that Jesus went through, he changed in ways that his friends weren't able to identify because they have never been through the same things. Suffering has a way of changing us. So this suffering that Jesus experienced, that they are now experiencing in their sadness and in their confusion, it did and it will continue to create new life. Jesus reminds them that there's a pattern in the stories of all of the Bible, all of the scriptures, that, that where there's suffering and then there's new life. And... Um, as soon as they recognized him, Jesus went away again and they were left to discuss it. But the risen Jesus did, in fact, appear to them and they must continue to bring God's promise of new life to the world. As we are in, a midst, in the midst of suffering and grief right now, much like the disciples were when they were walking down the road to Emmaus, many of our expectations and hopes have been broken or even shattered. Um, some of that that comes to mind, and I know we keep talking about it, but it's because we're still living in it, um, is that you don't get to finish your school year with your friends and your teachers in the classroom. Some of you are sad and grieving uh, because you want to play baseball with your baseball friends or soccer ended early, um, all different kinds of things uh, that we're sad about and that we're grieving. And um some of those things might be small in comparison to other issues that people are dealing with. Um, some people are grieving because they're having trouble finding food um, or toilet paper. That's still an issue. Uh, some of us are grieving because we've known people who have died in these last few weeks or people who have at the very least been very, very sick from the coronavirus or from the flu. And so there are different ways that we, things that we grieve about and we all grieve differently, but uh, no matter what it is, if it's special to you in your heart and your hopes for that have been shattered, um, you're going to experience grief from that. You're going to, going to experience sadness. Um, I'm experiencing sadness because we don't get to go on our summer mission trip with the youth group this summer. And I know that when we finally go, it's going to be amazing as always. Um, but it is a little bit sad. It's a lot sad uh, because it's something that we look forward to each and every year. And so um, our hopes, some of our hopes for things that we were hoping for, um, they've been shattered. Um, but we don't, and we co don't quite know when the end of this pandemic is going to be. It seems like it's it's coming, it's in a little while, um, but it's overwhelming as we sit and we still wait and continue. But what we do know is that from suffering comes new life and transformation. In our suffering, let us remember that new life appeared to the disciples and it will appear to us as well. So um, I want to ask you a couple of questions. I want you to think about the story that we read. What was your favorite part of this story? What part did you relate to the most? What was your favorite part? Turn to whoever's sitting next to you and even if it's your pet, even if it's your dog, and tell them what your favorite part of the story is. Thank you for sharing with somebody. Um, my favorite part was when Jesus broke bread with them. And um, it said that the re risen Jesus took the bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And um, at that moment, 
they recognized him, right? They gave it to him. He gave them the bread and their eyes were open. And that's my favorite part because just what a special thing it is. Um, you know, we celebrate communion typically when we're not in a pandemic uh, once a month. And um, we remember how Jesus died for us. And so for them, Jesus has just died and just come back to life three days prior. Um, and so just what a, an amazing thing to think about how communion and the breaking of bread that Jesus did with his disciples so long ago that we do it in remembrance of him as well and how that opens our eyes and reminds us of his love and his grace. So that's my favorite part. Uh, what signs of new life are you seeing right now? Think about it. What are some new things that you're seeing? Those are good answers. One of the things that I'm seeing, actually I have two things I want to share. So um, it's spring. And so definitely the new life as the flowers are blooming. Um, I'm having more time to work out in my yard because I don't have to drive the kids to and from school. And so that is just amazing to see the new life coming with this amazing weather that we've been having um, to see the spring flowers really blossom. Uh, so that's one thing. And then the second thing is um, even though we're experiencing grief over school not being in session, uh, physically. Um, I'm seeing new life in the way that we do school um, within our home, and uh, I'm enjoying working with the kids, and so I hope that you all are experiencing that as well in your home. Just um, experiencing something new. New life doesn't have to mean uh, things that are living actually physically coming to life, but just what's something new um, that you're experiencing, especially within your family, so keep that in mind. Um, and then the third question is, in what ways are you able to help care for the new life that is appearing now? Uh, we're doing things differently, friends. Um, next weekend, uh, on May 10th, we're going to have another drive-in worship service, and um, it it's fun. It's new. And so one of the ways you can help with that is if your family's comfortable with coming out for it, come to the drive-in. Experience this new different way of doing ministry together during this time. Um, and I want you to be thinking about that this week. How, what are some ways that you can care for new things that are happening right now? Um, things might not be being done the same way, but they can be done. Things can be done. Let us um, come together and care for one another in these new ways. So I want you all to think about that. And I want you to remember to talk to people that you love about the experiences that you're um, feeling right now, the sadness is, uh, the, the grief that you're feeling. Um, but I also want you to remember to share joy because in the risen Christ, we have joy in him. Um, we can experience his love no matter where we are and what's going on. And uh, just, I want you to rest with that assurance. So let us pray together. Dear God, thank you for this story. Thank you for the disciples that have gone before us to teach us, um, to teach us about new life that comes out of suffering. Um, teach us that uh, it's okay to be sad. It's okay to be confused. It's okay to be angry. Uh, but God, um, we thank you that they also teach us that we can move past that and to um, overcome those sadnesses and embrace new life, to embrace your love, and to look forward and have a hope for the future, God. And um, help us to be gentle with each other in our suffering. And God, continue to show us signs of new life, new ways to do things. And God, we just pray for the time that we can be all together again and that we can rejoice in your love and in your grace together uh, physically in this place and in any place that you call us to, God. And God, we do definitely pray for those who are sick and ask that you just bless them with your healing touch and comfort all of us um, in our despair. Uh, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, thank you so much for joining me. It is such a blessing that I can at least be with you in this way. And I hope you have a fabulous week. If you're feeling stressed out or overwhelmed uh, and there's any way that I can help, don't be afraid to uh, ask your parents to call me. Okay. I love you all and God bless.